Today's adventure brings me to the city, well, begins in the city of Center Hill. I almost said the, the center of City Hill, but it's the city of Center Hill. As the recording of us is Thursday, January 19, 2023, doing some Central Florida back road and small town stuff. I have never been to this community before. And a dog is barking behind me. This was established in 1842. Those could be Sandhill Cranes or Storks. Welcome everyone. Adam the Woo here. World of Micah also tagging along. Yep. Last night we decided we should hang out today, but we wanted to do something a little different and wanted to see some back road real Florida stuff. Well, yeah. maybe not necessarily real Florida, but because real Florida would be like the swampy areas. What's the small town stuff? Historical. Historical in some way. Ghost towns, yes. if you will. Ghost towns. And I was looking stuff up online. And both of us were looking at photos of this place and we were like, holy cow, this place exists? Yeah. So We've actually traveled this stretch of road before, didn't make it this far, so we're continuing going the, down. The closest I've ever been was like a mile up that way, but I didn't veer off to go to this community. Same. This should be pretty interesting. And even pulling in and parking over there, we noticed just on this little stretch, not even towards the downtown, is a lot of kind of desolate, closed down buildings. Yeah. A lot see of we, playing today. See what we can find. Yeah. Inviting you to join me and World of Micah. Shall you? Nailed it. I was taught at church camp years ago, you never really want to mess around with these. You don't want to like hold those, put scratch this on your face, any of the any of the moss. The moss. The bugs. The right? bugs that are in there you do not want to mess with. I, I learned in St. Augustine they used to use this to make pillows. Really? They would bunch it up. So there goes my would... theory out the window. No, it, they had bugs, but that's what they would use. Okay. Yeah. I'm gonna make a pillow out of that. <laughs> I always call these wheel of, wheel of Fortune moments because some of the letters are removed over there. L-U, missing a letter, B-E, so obviously that's gonna be lumber and hardware. That's it. Yeah, look at that, let me zoom in on that. Okay, that was an easy one. Ah, the old seven digit dialing. I can recall when my family moved to Central Florida in the early 90s, seven digit dialing being a thing. And I even remember when everything went to 10-digit ten, ten dialing, like it is now. This is an impressive tree. Look how it went up through the sidewalk. If you just picture like 60, 70 years ago, someone riding their bike down this. Well, the tree would have been here then too, though. So why is the sidewalk here? Because this tree has been here for, gosh, over 100 years probably. Yeah. The sidewalk's not 100 years old. No. Very interesting. But you see it's just broken up here. Yeah, maybe they put the cement around it. You just had to walk around. I don't know. Not Main Street, but Market Street. Market and Maryland Ave. Over there is a gas station. I'm going to walk over to that former gas station down there. Anything in there? Yeah. There's some uh, wasp nests. Some wasps? Yeah. Some mud daubers? Some big... This kind of reminds me of the building that they go inside in Beetlejuice, like the general store in Beetlejuice. Oh yeah. You know when he goes in there? Yeah. Adam Mait Baldwin, right? Maitland, Alec Maitland. Baldwin, it was Alec Baldwin. Mal uh, Maitland Hardware. Kind of so reminds me of that, these old doors. These old door handles here. It's all locked up, but. Yeah. Oh wow, yeah. It's a storage area now. There probably was a point when this was like a, a thriving little area down here old sign would have been sitting up there oh nice oh yeah you think, oh no you know what oh, that no, is it's not. this is where the the big That's metal like door opens elephant door basically and yeah, look at over look at this thing look at this oh yeah one thing i've always noticed i do travel a lot especially small towns like in the in the south kind of have that certain kind of vibe but you don't really get towns like this too much in florida if you do you got to go pretty good distances away from things and even one town like this will be spread out from another town kind of former downtowns and things like that you get into alabama georgia mississippi you could go into a town like this and then five miles up the road is another town exactly like this so this is kind of a nice treat to see these kind of relics of the past here in florida because they are few and far between for some reason florida 
is a lot different than the other southern states. Everything's a little more spread out. At least that's kind of the, the thought process I have on finding stuff like this. Ghost towns, if you will. Not full on, but kind of sort of. Oh, there's a crow landing over there. Mike is looking for Jason Voorhees up there. Yeah. <laughs> yeah, I love this. So are you supposed to stop right here where the sign is? Or are you supposed to stop up there where the corner is? Yeah, because if you stop here, you can't If you see stop it. here, like, yeah, that's interesting. So here's the old lift, the car lift. Oh, yeah. The mechanic shop up there. That's definitely not structurally sound. No. Up top right there. Got the one car going by, got a dog barking off in the distance. Got the old gas station, the mechanic lift there, the former gas pumps over there. Awesome. You think this is where the gas pumps? Yeah, definitely gas pumps right here. Yeah. Little fuel station. gas pump spot two pumps yep <laughs> probably full service yeah somebody pull up here That's pull right. over where you are yeah someone would run out of here yep just like you just walked up probably pull up here yep and then on you go fill her up can't get in the building but peeking in here the kitchen well, yeah did you see that uh -huh. something out of like texas chainsaw <laughs> That kind of reminds me of the trailer for Texas Chainsaw. The light and everything. Yeah. <laughs> there you go. Look at the uh, <laughs> look at the cobwebs in there too, given like the ambiance. Oh yeah. Oh yeah. Even the floor. There's a little breeze in there. Cause the cobwebs are moving. Now it's pretty obvious. Micah and I are probably going to be filming 90% of the exact same thing, but you can watch both. You go over to Micah's channel and see his view of this, see his view of the cutlery and the <laughs> painter's supply. One thing about Micah, we both have the same interests, so it's mm -hmm. kind of fun seeing this stuff together. That is great right there. Yeah, yeah, it looks like it's painted. This is glass, and it looks like it's chipping. I think it's painted, like hand-painted. Even these kind of retro little stanchions here. I don't even know why this would be here. I guess someone did not park over here. Yeah. Look at these bars. I don't remember bars being on these I windows. I said the same. Did you say <laughs> that? On the other side. On the other side I did. We both make the same jokes. <laughs> yep. This is the content, folks. <laughs> That's amazing. That is awesome, though. Look at this. Like, this right here would be kind of an antique on its own, too, if you, like, unscrewed that. Oh, yeah. It's heavy duty. That's very interesting. I've never really seen anything like that where the bars go that way and not up and down. Yeah, this definitely has a Friday the 13th vibe. It does, it totally does. This is about as Florida as it gets right here. It doesn't really translate to video, but one of the neighbors we just drove by has a, uh, they're burning some trash in their yard. There's a nice burning smell Yeah. <laughs> through here. Oh, there's an old dish in front of there. Mm-hmm. HD. I mean, people live here, so you can call it a ghost town. You can still be a ghost town and still have some residents. Cactus in the front. Yeah, look at that. Little chicken coops back there. Tree, tree uprooted. Oh, we just had a cat go by here. It's not bad luck if it goes to the side of the car, but as long as it doesn't cross right in front of you or walk under a ladder. I think that's stuff up the ladder. Stopped at this gas station. Now I filled up the other day, so I don't need any fuel, but the pump next to me is working, but this one here has been dismantled. And Micah has found something really interesting over here, a little relic of the past, an old payphone. He's drawn to payphones too, just like I am. And a vacuum. Don't know if that works. 
Okay, this right here is very valuable. So not only is that a payphone sign, but it's an illuminated payphone yep. sign. You don't see those too often. I wonder if it still works. Yeah, that right there in an antique shop would fetch a pretty good penny. Yep. Man, that's great. Payphone's not on there anymore, but yeah, that's awesome. And the name of this gas station is AA. Yeah, just AA, I don't even know what that stands for, the double A. No indoor bathrooms inside this convenience store. They actually have a little porta potty called the outhouse. And you can send a fax from here. When's the last time you saw something promoting sending a fax? Fax service here. Yeah, it's called AA. The double A up top. It looks like it might have been neon at one point. Looks like there's like some neon bulbs in those. Yeah. Uh, yeah. Or maybe some grooves of some I sort. Think, yeah, I think it's just because I can see through it. Wonder what the AA stands for. Or it may be two upside down V's with check marks. What wonder if they have like the. Downtown, like, downtown wonder if they have my mug. Right the uh -huh. right. We got Loretta. We got Gerald. Oh, okay. We got Ernie. We got Colleen. We got Fernando. Tammy. Yeah. Lloyd. Cool. I'm not in the mood for a snack quite yet, but take a look at this, a marsh jello cone. I've never seen that product before. These you squeeze in your mouth and they explode the flavor. All pizza tables over here in the front. Just talked to a local who told us a couple things about the town that we'll kind of reiterate as we're driving around. Very retro. And the local we just talked to has lived here his whole life. He was saying this place has been around about 30 years. It's an old fruit stand. Of course, the first thing I'm noticing is the, you know, the architecture of the building. But other than that, more importantly, is this old signage with the lights and everything. So the sign itself has been ripped out, but it still has the bulbs in there that illuminate what the sign would have said, some sort of fruit stand. Right adjacent to gas station over there. The AA, the double A. 329 for regular, 469 for diesel. Looks like this lights up too. The signage. I don't think I've ever seen Delhi spelled with two L's. Found the water tower. I mean, it's like a beacon, so it's like easily findable. There's a tornado siren. I guess it's a tornado siren there. Right to the base there, the eight or nine or ten sirens down the corner right over here. Not before tornadoes, but maybe just also to alert everyone that the fire trucks going out of the building. We just discovered that this is the city hall. Probably should look up the amount of people that live here, how many residents are here. It's probably more than we would imagine it is. But the city hall looks like a newer building. Probably was an older city hall they tore down to build this one. And there's that water tower again. And the flagpole. It's a very unique looking. The church steeple is on the ground. It's not on the top of the building. And the bell, the church bell, huge church bell, it's like wedged in the steeple there. But it's not on top of the building anymore. Or maybe it never was. Does it say how many people are in here? In 2010, there was a 988. Um, population. Nine, um, like a thousand people? Yeah. My big the foot is very confused by this tree <laughs> right here in the middle of the road. Okay, I had to pull over again just to show this. I would imagine this street got its name from the trees. And as stated, this tree's right, right in the middle of the road. Right in the middle of the road. Growing up out of the concrete is this tree sprouting up from the pavement. Amazing. Yeah, 
Yeah, the road's there, kind of obscuring the stop sign in a way. That's what we need. We need a golf cart, do a little golf cart tour around here. All right, let's move on and see what other kind of little towns we can find in back road stuff. Quite an assortment of chickens and roosters out here. This person's yard. What did you say the population was? A thousand? Fourteen hundred in 2018. So 2010, it was a thousand. A thousand, yeah. Eight years later in 2018, it went up to 1,500, almost 1,500. Well, this one's all boarded up. Mm-hmm. Is that a gun rack? I think it is. Chicken back there, too, and a rooster back there. Pretty big tree. Another satellite dish. Hello, cows. Oh, it's a baby. <laughs> See, those cows are in the sun. I would be this cow over here <laughs> in the shade. How's it going, shaded cow? Doing some grazing. Yeah, this little stretch, this is about as real Florida as you can get right here. Well, besides going to like the swamps of the Everglades. Yeah. That's what I was saying earlier, man, the, the trees and... Okay, there's a goat, a cat, and then two other goats. Oh, I see them in the corner. Over there in the corner. And a couch on the porch. Let's go on the couch. <laughs> Making some serious eye contact over there and turned away. Now, as we're back on a little busier road, car just went by, a little bit of traffic, going by this old newspaper spot for the Daily Commercial, it was called. Kind of wondering if anyone lives back in here. Micah and I were discussing, he's like, do you think anybody lives back in here? Obviously someone did at one point, but now it's kind of tough to tell. There's no signage or anything. And it doesn't look like anyone's driven back in here for a while. Some of those berries. I never know if I should eat something or not. I don't want to have like an into the wild moment. Yeah. Because that did not end well for that guy. Yeah. I don't think anybody lives back in here. Into the wild. You just never know though. You don't want to go rooting around in someone's property. And that door is completely busted open over there. Some old Florida homesteads. Back in the back back there. Yeah, the screen and porches for the mosquitoes. Yep, just to sit out there and take in some of the cool air because maybe they don't have air conditioning. I think it's smart to not go in. Yeah, it doesn't look safe. Yeah, well you just never know who could be living in there. <laughs> Truthfully. There's another antenna right there, an old school antenna. We see some satellite dishes, we see some old school antennas. Like there's another satellite dish over there. And as I'm looking at this door, I can picture Victor Crowley running out of here, ripping my face off. Did you ever see Hatchet? Did you ever yeah, see the, the movie Hatchet? Can't you picture Victor Crowley coming out of here? Absolutely. I thought that's what you said. Yeah, we passed this place over here that has like a bunch of doors. It's like a door salesman place. Used to be like a barbecue spot though over here. Did you used to own the barbecue place? My dad and uncle did. Oh really? Okay. No, but it's not a barbecue place anymore, right? No, I sell doors now. Oh, you sell doors, okay. Yeah. That's awesome. How long did your dad own the business for? My 
grandpa was the one that opened them up. Oh, he did? Yeah. Just talking to the guy that owns the property, and he was saying that across the road, they're building a lot of shopping centers and condos and housing developments and things right over there. He said at some point, because where he lives and he has his, his dad's barbecue place, which is right here, now it's the, the door store that he might have to sell us sell the property at some point. I always love little stories like that. Kind of fascinating to talk to people. He also said that this sign is not his, but he allowed the church to put it on his property. It's right next door. Oh, look at the clothesline over there. How often do you see a clothesline? Look at that. Got an old building there. The sign for North 301 right here. And then going this way, there's an old homestead across the way there. And the gentleman we were just talking to that had the door business at his dad, he said his grandfather built that barbecue joint and his dad ran it. And now he owns the property and sells doors, was saying that they were planning on expanding this road to a four lane and a lot of the residents refused to sell their houses. He was saying that there's not a lot of empty, empty houses along this street, but definitely are a few that are not, you know, uh, that are unoccupied. So they probably could widen this, but some of the houses down there are occupied, so maybe they have to reroute the road. Central Florida is expanding, and a lot of these kind of small communities, there's not a whole heck of a lot going on. One day we'll be pretty busy and thriving again. Man, was this a house or was it a business? It almost looks like a train station. Yeah, it does. It does have a train station by it. I didn't even notice until Micah pointed it out. There's like almost a newer roof up there. I don't want to say newer, but definitely a lot newer than the, the base of the building. It's been re-shingled probably in the last 20 years. That old, old hinge there, the old metalworks, door frame inside there. Definitely not structurally sound. And then the old barn back here. Look at that, it's using, use, using for advertisements on the front there. But this relic of the past, with the porch out front. It's just a screams old Florida. Got the caving in of the wood on the porch itself here, facing the road. Hard to hear it with the road traffic, but the insects over here are making some interesting noises. See if I can hear it now. Nah. There was like a locust or something making like a chirping noise over there. I was getting camera shy. You kind of hear them. Oh yeah. It's like a locust, right? I think so. Ah, oh, someone's setting off fireworks. Or something else. There's golf carts. Lucky. We are here on the when they are open. Come visit the historic village boutiques. Those are the hours there. Approximate hours. Approximate. Yeah, Approximate like there. That. Nine to four ish. Ish. I like the I like that you noticed that. I would I would have just saw nine to four. And you're like, no, there's an ish on there. Yeah. So this is the town of Coleman. Where they have the old city jail down here, which has been converted into a little gift shop. Yeah, this is a really, this is a really good usage of these old buildings. Yeah. This kind of reminds me of Knott's Berry Farm a little bit, this little yeah. section back in here. You got the library stable, you got the old jail, you got the post office here in Coleman, all converted and now used for shops and whatnot back in here, tucked away. We were just talking to one of the vendors that was in the schoolhouse. She was saying that the old railroad, they used to have bu like bunks up top on the upper level where people back when they would take the train. Also, the these were all moved down the way a bit. So these are not originally in the same spot. Even so the jail was moved as well. 
of the old train station, there were bunks up top that people that were waiting for the train the next day could stay up, could stay upstairs. And then she also said that the jail itself used to not have any bricks around it. it used to just be an all barred up jail. So the elements, if you were, you know, if you were in jail, you would get wet, and people could see you in the jail before they built the brick, all the rocks all around it. How interesting. Down the ways a little bit on the on the road. Okay. The post office is all made out of cypress. It's the oldest post office in Florida, right there. He's the oldest post office in the Florida. Oldest post office in Florida. They're all made out of cypress. Okay, we've carried on about 20 miles or so to Okahumpka. Now, I've been to the Okahumpka Travel Plaza on the Turnpike, but never to the community of Okahumpka before. We pulled over in this nice man's yard who sells and makes these swings. Take a look at these. We asked if we could pull up on his property and take a look at his swings, and he said, sure, have a seat in them. Look at these wind chimes right here. One thing I was noticing is that windmill over there too. He said he hasn't made any in a while. Oh, here's like a little Czech Cola airplane. Got the Okahumka bird feeder here. There's a lizard on the front of the roof. Just with a lizard hole now, a pole hole, worms. And there's a Coca-Cola emblem there too. This seat has got a drink. Got the drink holder on it? Yeah. How do you know that branch will hold? So far. It's so holding far. So, for 15 <laughs> years you've been swinging in that one. Because I would look at that and say, I don't know if it could hold my body weight like it could yours. Is that a sloth? Oh, it's a monkey. Stuffed monkey there. Almost looks like a carving here. Like a tiki carving almost. Did you? I got carving out there. I used to. Whenever I retired, I was working 16, 17 hours a day. And I had to have something to do. So first I made dies, then I made pins, then I made flames. I, I made pulpits for the churches. And pulpits for the church, okay. Yeah. So you've lived here your whole life and you're 90 and you've made a lot of swings. I, one time I had 30 swings and my class would get together here and cook hot dogs. And the biggest one of the biggest lawyers in Orlando is Charles Gray. I don't know if you know Charles him. Gray? Yeah. Okay. You know Charles Gray? I don't know him. Okay, he's he's a criminal lawyer. He's not uh, like Morgan Morgan. That's the one I know. John Morgan, I know. Everybody knows John Morgan. Yeah. And uh I'll show you my outhouse. I'll show you what I did with it. This outhouse was built in 1941 by the WPA. That was a work program. Over here? Yeah, that was a work program the government did to give people jobs. Okay. And uh, this one is down in the quarters. And only the foundation part of it. Does it actually have a real pump system, or? Yeah, it does. Wow. Yeah, it's got the pump system. Now it's shut off because the water authority came by and we know what I'm doing with the water. <laughs> now, I said, that every revolution, that thing that turned, of course, it's locked off now. 
Every revolution is a quart of water. Every full turn is a Every, quart of water? Yeah. One turn and a quarter will give you a quart of water. Where does the water go? Well, into that, into that, that reservoir? Tank. All right. I had, a, I had tangerine trees here, and that's what I wanted to grow with. Yeah, they're good. That's a calamondin. What is this? Calamondin. Calamondin. Yeah. Okay. You take the seed out of that and plant it, and it'll be wild. Yeah. And then you take it, when it gets up, say, about that high, cut it off, or you can put a graft in it, or you can take it cooler, put a graft on the taurine. Hmm. And you yeah. see it's a honey bell. That's the best there is. Oh, really? Honey bell. I like this. What's this called again? That's Calabundum. It's good. Yeah, it's pretty good. Is that a grapefruit or an orange? Yeah, this is an orange. As you can see, I don't know my fruits very well. Make <laughs> <laughs> that bite. It's pretty good. Just take your turn and run across it. Can I? Can you cut me a little piece yeah. off? You don't want to eat it. I don't want to eat it. No. So just lick it. Just run your turn across. <laughs> it's tart. It's tart. It doesn't feel like. Makes good pie. Makes good pie. It's tart. It's tarter than a regular orange. Oh, yeah. Woo. Right? Yeah. Sour. It is sour. Okay. That is the root salt. They told me to it that way. Look at this. Oh, wow. That's amazing. If you. You got all the photographs in here and everything. Yeah, if you read that, it'll tell you what life, what about outhouses. Wow. You have a, do you ever use the, oh, you, well, you have toilet paper. Yeah. You didn't, you ever use the Sears Roebuck catalog? Nah. Never did? I have one. I always hear that, but the people used to use is the Sears Roebuck and catalog. You need to cross there, and of course it has the lid there that closes, but I just stuck everybody's picture in there. That's neat. I like that. Are these are all your friends and family through here? <laughs> this is awesome. Um, wow, how cool. If you notice, it's put together with wooden pegs. Yes, sir. Looking at these tiki's he's carved up here, too. Love them. I love that one, the tall, skinny one guy up there. Yeah. <laughs> the mouth. Which one, Micah? This one right here. Oh, yeah. The big chin. Oh, God. Oh, God. Oh, God. That's where we are. Yeah. He was saying when back in the day, Okahumpka had 600 houses and Tampa had 30. Oh. Way back in the day. Oh, how things have changed. Oh, yeah. So he's lived here his whole life. He's 90 years old. You can do anything you want to if you want to bad enough. That's right. The depot was right there. The train depot? Yeah, it was right there where those trees are at. Oh. And it's in the Tampa Fairground now. No, yeah, I've seen it. So where were the train tracks in correlation to the... Where we were standing back there with the outhouses of that. The train where tracks went there. right there through your yard. There were two tracks. So next time I go to the fairgrounds in Tampa, I'm going to look for that that building that used to sit right there that's been transplanted. The Thomas Air was there. The Hunter's Room Hotel was right up here where the blue house is at and the other house. And Harvey Firestone and Alexander Graham Bell and Henry Ford would come down here in the wintertime and fish and hunt. Oh, so here's a picture of the school back in 1829, or 1929. That's what it's going to look like. They've got uh, 600,000. There's Smoker T. Washington. And, uh, 
20 years ago, I got a grant from a company here in Oak County. It's a lay area back here that hasn't been used in a while with this swing. Some uh, empty buildings back in there. Some more swings over here. And take a look at this dinosaur right here. Kind of all grown over back in here. Gotta say, this guy's very, very nice. Showing us around, giving the, giving the tour of his home that he's lived his whole life. How many residents does Okahonka have? I don't have an idea. I remember in 1955, there was uh, 79 blights and 69 blights. So 150 people? Mm -hmm. It didn't have room, but it was always when you come in with the riverboat, and the riverboat only went to here, out of Alaska down to here. Yeah. And uh, you get off there, and if you was going to Tampa, this is the road that you would catch the stagecoach. It's called Stagecoach Road. Stagecoach Road. Okay. And there was about three or four houses down here then. These houses were what? These been built later on. Okay, Irene, Cole Reed, and Red. They're three black people. They lived right here, and each one of them had their little old shack house. And shotgun house. You know what a shotgun house is? I don't. You stand in the front door and you can shoot out the back door. You stand in the front and you can shoot out the back? Yeah. Yeah. Okay. okay. Elvis was born. The there. three houses was right there. Okay. They got in the fuss and argue. The two women did over over red. There's another black man. They were in their 70s and 80s. And uh, they went down to the store and they got the fussing in there. And the man on the store run them outside. And Irene cut Irene's head off. With a, what? We saw it. Oh she my! Made about three steps and boom! Oh you my God! You saw someone get their head cut off? Yeah, all the blood flew. <laughs> <laughs> oh my! <God>. The blood flew. <laughs> what year was that? Around 1956 or seven. Days I need to get make, buy myself a Bigfoot. Yeah, a lot of Bigfoots in here. You can be friends with Big the Foot. Oh yeah, definitely. We're getting the grand tour today. I mean, that's why I have this on here because I do make. And that's your YouTube channel? Yeah. Uh, you know, let, me, let me make sure that's what it is. I mean, I have a lot to learn. So on your YouTube channel, you show how these boxes are made? Oh yeah, I have a video on making boxes. You say you were the first person to figure out how to cut the box around? No, how to how to use a CNC and make boxes. There was nobody else doing it, so I went okay. ahead and made a video on it. Yeah, CNC, CNC. So it is the same as this? Yeah. So yeah. if you just search that, you'll find your channel. Yeah, I only have 46 subscribers, but. All right. Check it out. It's all yeah. the product and we'll remove everything extra except what's inside. You know, there's there's something there inside. There's a there's a product, there's a, a piece of art. You yeah. know, we make a lot of signs, like I made that sign that's gonna be going out front. 
uh, in front of the property, but I also do welding and fabrication, sheet metal work. Um, pretty much, I can work with almost any material. Vacuum table. Oh. Okay, that's a 10 horsepower compressor outside, vector compressor. You can take an aluminum can and crush it with your hand. That can take a 50 gallon drum and crush it like that. It's, this is uh, 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 like MDF, all right? It's like particle board. Yeah. Air sucks through this. Wow. It sucks so hard that it pulls air through this to hold pieces down to the machine. So I don't have to use any fixtures. I don't have to use any clamps, right? Turned out to be a pretty interesting day. And James, the guy that showed us around, nicknamed Red, he's lived in Okahumka his whole life. And this is the book that he wrote called Tall Sawgrass. He gave me a copy, a little glossary on some of the terms, on what things are like terminology, skeeters, mosquitoes, shine or swamp water, moonshine, a serving dish of swamp cabbage and steak. Yeah, it's pretty interesting. He wrote a book on Okahumka. There's a bird up there crowing. Well, that's going to do it for today. A full day. I think there's a bird up there. See you in the next video. The vlog is... You never know how a day is going to turn out when you get in the car and go somewhere. The vlog is up.